We're going to do a couple of examples of pH calculations for solutions from strong acids. Let's start by calculating the pH of a six molar solution of HCl, which is one of our six strong acids. As you know, the pH is calculated by taking the negative log of the H3O plus concentration for a solution. So in order for us to be able to calculate the pH of six molar HCl, we need to figure out how much H3O plus is actually in that six molar HCl solution. And the way that we're gonna do that is by thinking about the reaction between HCl and the water that is present in that six molar solution. When they mix together, we produce chloride ion and H3O plus ion. If you're not comfortable with writing out these types of reactions right here, don't worry. You will be because you're going to practice this a lot. We're going to be using a tool called an ice table, I-C-E. The ice table um, stands for the initial, the change, and the ending or equilibrium. Um, concentrations in this particular reaction. So for this six molar HCl solution, initially we are starting with six molar HCl and no products at all at the beginning of the reaction. And we're not going to be including water in this because water is um, in excess, doesn't really matter how much we have. Because this is a strong acid, it reacts completely, meaning that all six molar of that HCl is gonna react. So all of it is gonna go away. Again, that's because it's a strong acid and it reacts completely. So 100% of our initial amount of six molar HCl is going to react. The stoichiometry in this equation is one to one to one, which means that if we lose six molar HCl, we're gonna be producing six molar Cl minus, and we're also gonna be producing six molar H3O plus. And when this is all said and done, six minus six is no more HCl left over. Zero plus six means that we have six molar chloride ion, but that doesn't really matter because that doesn't have anything to do with the pH. 0 plus 6 means that we have 6 molar uh, H3O plus concentration. I don't know why I've kept those positive signs. They're not necessary. And this is what we actually need to solve this problem. We need to know how much H3O plus we have when this reaction is all said and done. This is the number that gets plugged into our pH calculation. So let's go ahead and do that. The pH of this solution is the negative log of 6 the concentration of H3O plus. And that is a negative 0.78. Yes, it is a negative pH. The log of six is 0.78, but we have that negative sign in front. It is not crazy to have a negative pH. It's definitely possible. It's not super common, but this is a really concentrated solution. So it makes sense that we would have a very, very low pH. So if you do end up with a negative number for pH, first of all, don't think that that's impossible. That doesn't necessarily mean that you've done something wrong. Just double check and make sure that that negative number is consistent with a high concentration of an acid. Let's look at our second example. This problem is a little bit different. How much of a five molar HBr solution do we need to make 600 milliliters of an HBr solution that has a pH of 8.80? Um, so this is, this is basically a dilution type question. So, so we're starting with five molar HBr. We don't know how much of this we need. We do know that we want to end up with 600 milliliters and we want the pH to be 0.8. Let's kind of, first of all, remember the dilution equation, M1V1 equals M2V2. This is kind of one of those equations that students tend to forget, but it's really, really important. And our initial um, molarity is the 5.0, so I'm going to kind of mark that. Um, this is our, the 600 milliliters is our final volume over there. So we can fit a little bit of stuff in here. We know that our initial molarity is 5.0. Uh, the V1, that's what we're trying to solve for. How much do we actually need? So we're not going to know this number. This is the number that we're trying to figure out. The M2, what's the final molarity? The problem isn't giving us that information. Like We're, we're going to have to find a way to figure that out, whatever the M2 is. I'm just going to leave a gap right there for it. V2 is 600 milliliters, or if we wanted to, we could put this into units of liters. The volume unit doesn't matter in the M1V1, M2V2 equation as long as you use the same unit every time. 
So how are we going to figure out the concentration of our final solution? Well, that information is going to come to us from the pH. Remember that we can use the pH to calculate the H3O plus concentration. The pH of the solution is the negative log of the H3O plus, and we can do the inverse of that. So the H3O plus concentration is 10 to the negative pH. We just saw in the previous example that the concentration of the acid is going to be equal to the concentration of the H3O plus when we're dealing with a strong acid. So if we can figure out the concentration of the H3O plus, that's going to give us the concentration that we're looking for in um, this particular situation. So let's go ahead and solve for H3O plus. H3O plus is 10 to the negative, our desired pH is 0.8, 10 to the negative 0.8, which is 0.158 molar. And again, that's the concentration of the solution that we need to end up with. So that's our M2. So I'm gonna plug that in right there. And now all that we have to do is solve for V1. 0.158 times 600 divided by 5 gives us 18.96 milliliters.